if you are struggling with mental health issues, if you're struggling in general, it does not mean you're not smart. It does not mean you're not capable. It does not mean you are weak. It just means you are human. Welcome to Renew and Transform, a podcast to renew and transform your mind and cultivate your leadership to live a life worthy of your calling. I'm your host, Mindset and Leadership Coach, Musa Mikkel. Let the renewal begin. Welcome to Renew and Transform. Thank you for tuning in. This episode, I want to talk about one of the greatest issues in our society that's plaguing humanity across the globe, especially our youth, especially here in America, we are seeing a increase in mental health issues, an increase in violence, an increase in suicide, amongst many other things. And I want to talk about our peace of mind. As you probably realize for yourself and myself as well, there are many things that steal our peace. Some of the main things are personal experiences, whether that's our relationships with people, our spouse, our loved ones, friends, coworkers, whoever those are. It could be traumatic experiences. It could be even those experiences that are not very substantial but can affect us emotionally at, you know, driving in traffic, getting cut off, someone saying something that disrespected you or a coworker not acknowledging you or a boss or whatever the case is, you can fill in the blanks. You have enough examples on personal experiences that steal your peace. Sometimes the greatest deception is that we don't even recognize how unpeaceful we are. We don't take the time to reflect and look at it and ask ourselves like, what really is stealing my peace here? And is it worth my peace? Is this worth my peace? Is that person cutting me off because they think they're in a hurry and they're going to get somewhere faster, really worth my peace. Is what somebody said worth my peace? Is my whatever my boss said really worth my peace? Depression is a big thing in our society. We, A lot of us have experienced a part of it to some extent, maybe the feeling of it, but not in the elongated state of depression, but there's depression, there's anxiety, there's stress, there's panic, there's so many things that can affect our mental health. Your mental health affects how you think. That's the biggest thing that our mental health does. It, it, this is a cycle. It affects how we think. And our thoughts and how we think affect how we feel. Our feelings and our emotions, our thoughts influence this. Until you realize this, you can start directing your thoughts rather than saying, these are just my thoughts. These are just my feelings. I have no control. That would be more of the victim mindset where you're powerless, but that's not the truth. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what God says. That's not what you need to hear. And that's not what you need to tell yourself. How you feel, your emotions will then affect how you act and what you do and your behavior. Your mental health affects how you handle stress, your capacity to handle stress. Your mental health affects how you relate to people, whether that's your intimate relationships or just people in general, wherever you go. Your mental health affects how you bounce back or how you don't bounce back. Your ability to be resilient, your ability to weather the storm. When you're in a dark, depressed place, your capacity to have resilience is lessened. It's thin. It's easily breakable. Your mental health affects how you make choices and what choices you make. Your mental health affects how you cope. And your mental health affects how you choose your friends. And then we know our friends have a great impact on our brains and our mindsets unconsciously and consciously. We begin to behave like the people we spend the most time with. And here's a myth. Here's a myth that has been circulating society for a long time. And this is something that inspired me to want to talk about it. And why this podcast is going to be about mindset a lot of the time is because 
mental health, and if you're struggling with mental health, you shouldn't be. If you're, even if you're a strong Christian, if you have the Bible, if you have Jesus, you shouldn't struggle with mental health. Or if you're a man, you're supposed to be strong. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be struggling with mental health issues. Or if you're an adult, you should be able to just overcome any issue you have because of your age or whatever the case is. Or in some way that if you struggle, especially with mental health, that it's a negative thing or it's a bad thing. And that is a complete lie. With mental health, there's a lot of things that could improve them. There are many, it could be many things that we need. But the main things I found are, first, we need better friends. We need friends that encourage us and help us and guide us and speak life into us, that are able to pray for us, that are able to just weather those storms with us. More often than not, we need more sleep. But the challenge is when you're already dealing with mental health issues, that takes away from your sleep, which then affects your mental health even more because you're now deprived of sleep. But a lot of times sleep allows things to come back online. That must be a high priority. We may need more exercise. We know when we're in our head and we're dealing with a lot of things mentally, we need to activate our body. Get out of your mind and get into your body. Start activating your body. Start working out. Start moving as little as you can. Develop it over time. Consistency is the key. Just move your body. Get out of your head and move your body is the quickest way, I believe, to get out of this habit or pattern of stress, depression, anxiety, you name it. A big thing is that society doesn't want to make as normal, but we are seeing efforts to make it more normal and more acceptable and more encouraged is therapy. If you've dealt with trauma in your life, it should be something that you definitely look into, having some type of therapy where you can really dive deep into the history of your experiences, those traumas, those things, and how they affect your life now. And those coping mechanisms that you've developed when you were five years old and younger or older, dealing with stress and dealing with trauma, those coping mechanisms might not support you now as an adult. They might only hinder you from having the intimate relationships that you really desire and that you really deserve. It might hinder you from having effective performance in your career. It might hinder you in having the healthiest body you can have. Addressing these things from our childhood, addressing our issues that we never fully grieved, addressing those things, those losses, those pains in our life, those suffering that we've experienced that we never truly allowed ourselves to grieve because society says you have to keep on going. You have to go to work now. You have to do this. You have to do that. You got to keep moving. You got to be strong for the family. And you never actually grieved. You never actually processed the pain. You never actually recognized or took a deep look and a deep dive into those things that are causing you to think a certain way. Those things that are making you act a certain way and feel a certain way. Those things that have created your habits and why you always produce the same results. Therapy can assist you with that. And even another thing that is definitely neglected in society today is nutrition. The ability to eat well can provide the nutrients we need for our brain to fire on all cylinders, to work properly. We need to feed our brain the things that it actually needs. If you are struggling with mental health issues, if you're struggling in general, it does not mean you're not smart. It does not mean you're not capable. It does not mean you are weak. It just means you are human. It is part of our experience. And it's most likely that you're trying to deal with it on your own. And you don't have to. Your life is always moving in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. The great news is you, as a thinking human being, have been blessed 
with the ability and liberty to choose how you think. But so often, more often than not, we are reactive. We are operating from a subconscious place on autopilot where circumstances, life, people, our external life is communicating to us and affecting how we think and what we think about. I think the average human sees 10,000 advertisements a day on average. You are being conditioned to think about certain things. Your life will go in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. Therefore, you need to start controlling what you think about the most. Intentionally choosing to think about what empowers you, to think about things that are above and good like God and morals and your ethics, your values, your integrity. Start thinking about the things that will actually help you develop better habits. Start thinking about the people that you can serve and get out of your own head and get out of your own darkness and to serve someone who is even less fortunate than you. Start thinking about things that encourage you instead of the news, which might make you feel less than great. Start thinking about the quotes or scriptures or books or music, even movies and shows that actually inspire you to take action and learn more about yourself and your mind and why you do what you do. Your brain is constantly making connections and becoming efficient with those connections. It's like electricity creating a pathway. And once that pathway happens a few times, it starts getting easier and easier for your brain to pass those electromagnetic signals to each node in your brain. And you start developing a pattern. You start developing a habit. And because your brain is electricity, it's going to follow the path to least resistance, the one that's so ingrained, the road that there's already an engraved trail on, it doesn't want to go off trail. It wants to stay on the trail that you've been traveling on for the last 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 50, 60 years because that's the same road it takes, the same thought pattern that your mind has been taking for decades. You have to intentionally choose I'm going to take the harder way. I'm going to get off, bro. I'm going to get off this trail. I'm going to scale this side of this mountain because I don't want to think like that. And then what happens when you start taking a new trail over and over and over, you create a new trail. And then guess what? Your brain's going to take the path to least resistance. Once you solidify that trail, you're going to start habitualizing that thought process. You're not going to continue to think the way you used to think, but it takes that initial effort and intention to go off trail and fight the resistance long enough for you to not think the same way. If these negative thoughts are happening over and over and over, they become negative thought habits, negative thought patterns. Those patterns then become negative feeling patterns. Those negative feeling patterns become negative action habits, negative behavior patterns, negative habits. And then that produces your life. Your habits produce your life. Romans 12.2 tells us to not conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. If you're not intentionally creating your patterns, the healthy patterns that are written out and spelled out in the Bible, in Proverbs, in the way that we can think to live an honorable and righteous life, if you're not intentionally seeking out those patterns, you are going to be overcome by the world's patterns. Whatever the world tells you, whatever the media tells you, whatever social media tells you, whatever your friends tell you, whatever your family tell you, whatever your coworkers tell you, whatever people say, whatever you see, and whatever you consume, because those things determine how you think. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind one thought at a time. So I want to ask you, what are you fixing your thoughts on? What are you fixing your thoughts on? 
What are you fixing your mind on? The great thing about this neuroplasticity, you don't have to fix your mind on the former things. You have the ability to fix your mind on those things that can renew it. So you don't just stay the same. Because if you do nothing, you'll get nothing. If you stay doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result. And before I wrap this up, one thing you can do to renew your mind is try giving your issues, try giving your troubles to Jesus. He can renew your mind. You have nothing to lose but all to gain. Much love. Thank you for tuning in. Be a light and share this with someone you love and care about. And please subscribe and leave a review so we can reach more people. And remember, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will.